once again, it's been a long time coming. We've, we, we purchased the stadium yesterday. Um, we've been trying to purchase the stadium for years. Uh, it, is, it has taken us a long time. But just like anything else that we do, as long as we solve enough problems, we'll, we'll get to a, a positive solution. Um, John Bennett has been a stalwart in Scottish football. He's an Aberdeen fan, Dundee United director, and a friend to Dundee Football Club. Um, John helped us out in our time of need long before we got here, and then even during COVID, had did a few things to help the football club out during a time where all of our heads are spinning. And uh, we cannot thank him enough for, for doing that. And, you know, being a steward to our, our, our stadium for the years that he's, he's done that. I also like to mention Jack Robertson. Jack Robertson, um, big Dundee fan, chairman or former chairman of Thornton's Law and advisor to me and when we were first, first came into the organization. Uh, and he's also a very good friend of John Bennett's. And uh, he advised me long ago about the purchase of the stadium and what we should be doing and how we should be doing it. And he's really the ones that put us and, and Mr. Bennett together. And uh, all, amongst other things that he advised us on, uh, he's a very soft-spoken man, but he's a mountain of a man. And uh, I'd like to put on record our thanks to him as well. But it's a good day for Dundee Football Club. It's, you know, Dark Blue Property Holdings, Tim and I uh, uh, purchased the stadium. It's a next step in the whole series of steps that we have to take in order to, to have our vision of having a brand new stadium for Dundee Football Club uh, and the city uh, in place. And now having that, that stadium or the and the lease that comes with that stadium, we're able to maneuver uh, much easier. And uh, it's, it's a long time coming, just like everything else. I'm sure you're going to ask me about the stadium. That's a long time coming as well. But we continue behind the scenes to, to tr you know, plod forward and, and continue to solve these issues to the point where you know, we have a, a positive outcome. And uh, as of yesterday, it, like two minutes to five, we had that positive outcome. Um, so I'll open it up to questions for anything, anybody that has a question about the stadium and, uh, and the purchase. How significant is this step in the future of Dundee Football Club? It's a huge step, I think. I mean, we haven't owned the stadium for 14 years. It's, uh, it's, put back in the hands of the owners. I know it's not back in the hands of the football club itself, but the owners of the football club. And it allows us to take the next step in order to expand. If you, if you look over the 10 years that we've been in charge of the organization, everything that we've done, and it's been slow and we're boring, we understand that, but behind the scenes, things are getting better every step, every year. Sometimes on the park, it doesn't look that way, but behind the scenes, it's constantly getting better. Look around you. We've we've been here uh, a little over a year, and you know even though this is a temporary facility, it's the best facility that we've ever had as far as training and the ability to do what we do. When we first took over, our first team was training at Dawson Park, so we've come miles from where we're at. So I do think it's just another step forward for the organization, and it's going to be uh, you know there's many more steps for us to take. What sort of change does it make to the football club right now? I don't think the football club's going to see much of a change, to be fair, because the amount of money that we spend on Dems Park, people don't really get to see. Um, we recently had to upgrade sections A, B, and C in the main stand, and nobody will know because all of our fans sit in other areas. But we had to upgrade that because of uh, fire regulations, the new green guide, and we spent a lot of money on the stadium. And that's the problem with Dens. We love Dens. Everybody loves Dens. But we spend a lot of money on Dens, but you can never see it. Every once in a while, you might hear that we have a new, you know, there's a new tannery there, a new this or a new that. But at the end of the day, it's still a, a building that we love, but it's an aged building that it's hard to, it's hard to maintain. And um, people think we don't spend any money on it, and the reality is we spend a fortune on it. And... We just are unable to increase the, you know, 
the entertainment value to the fans based on the bones of the building. Does this investment affect the player budget at all? No, no. The, uh, I get that question quite a bit. The football club and Dark Blue Property Holdings are two totally separate organizations, and no, it doesn't affect the, the, the budget at all. What would affect the budget is if we go into a new facility, more people come, that affects the budget. Having finally bought Dan's lot, John, um, what are your plans for the stadium? Well, right now is to, to maintain the stadium and until such time as we have the other stadium built. I mean, I'm not sure it's a good financial plan to own two stadiums, um, but that's kind of the idea of where we're at at the moment. And with the financial um, environment that we're currently in. So we'll continue to play at Dens. We'll continue to uh, keep it up and running the best that we can. And then uh, when the other stadium's finally built, then we'll have some ideas of what we want to do, but uh, we probably won't have a full understanding of what we're going to do at Dens until such time. And we've, it's going to take a little bit of time for that to happen. So taking this step was a big step in order for us to really start making those decisions and, and studying that. So there'll be no redevelopment of the Den site before the new stadium is built? At this moment in time, no. So that question has come up before as well, is are we going to go to a, an alternative site to do the two? At the time that I answered that question before, where we said we might, ha might have to train or play at a different facility, that was where the economic environment at that time and the lending at that time posed that we might have to sell Dens in order to have the funding in order to build the stadium. At this point in time, that's not the case. So the idea is that we would um, play at Dens and kick the last ball at Dens and the very next ball we kick would be at the new stadium. But things, you know, we've been working at this for since 2016 and things have changed multiple times. So we will continue to take the steps that we need to take to make sure that everything that we're doing for the football club is getting better and better every step of the way. An ongoing problem has been getting finance in place. Is that now in place? No, no. You, well, we will never have finance in place. We don't even have plans in place. So you, what, we don't even know what we're financing at this point in time. We do have groups that are interested in financing the organization and financing the... the the stadium and the, the other elements of the build um, mm -hmm. and we've been speaking to them for quite a while but we won't really won't start digging into that until we have approval so they know what they're what they are financing and the like but we have the ability to make that happen it's also <coughs> excuse me it's also a complex project just how confident are you that uh, you will receive planning permission well i hope that you know the councillors will see how much of a lift that this will give the city. There will be, when we put the, when we have the application in, there'll be loads of information that comes out. We have done numerous studies, social economic studies especially, that show a huge lift in, you know, in the finances of the city and jobs and bringing people into the city to spend money, all of those things, but also a cultural thing of bringing the, the city up again and the well-being of the city. Those will come out um, when those studies will come out and we will be talking about them a lot. Um, so if you take on balance those, you think that we would have a very good shot at getting uh, approval. But uh, you never know. The doomsday scenario of planning permission doesn't go through. Have you and Tim discussed what then happens with Dundee Football Club? Well, nothing. We continue on the way that we are and we probably f will fight that fight when it comes. So that's... That's what we do. I mean, everything that we've done to date, there's always been issues and there's always problems that we have to solve. And we're doing that behind the scenes constantly. So if that comes to fruition, we'll fight that fight. We've said a couple of times you know, we should have a, a game at the new stadium. Uh, are you willing to put a, a timeline on that? A game? At the, yeah. Well, yes. I mean, no, I'm not willing to put a timeline on that. What I can say is we have been diligently working towards finalizing the plans and the applications to the point where we're just about there. 
every Monday for a year, we've had our planning team meetings at various levels. We have a load of consultants, and we think we've solved all of the problems. So everything's being tied up as we speak. They gave me a time frame to say that, because I ask them for a year, every day, every Monday for a year, I've asked. They've given me a time frame. Uh, I'm not going to mention that time frame, but it's really soon. And if they miss it, then you won't see my disgust. <laughs> You'll see that, oh yeah, that's, you know, that's the time that's coming up. Just, just on that, what does this purchase do to the time scale that you're looking at the new stadium? Does it speed up the process? It doesn't, well, unfortunately, no. It, so it's just part of the process. The planning and those type of things, that is what is going to give us the timeline for the project. This, buying the stadium, if we bought it a year ago or within the next six months, it wouldn't have changed the time frame. It's just having the comfort, you know, the, the comfort that we own it and we're able to move as quickly as we want to move as far as you know, getting the stadium built, not having to worry about a long-term lease hanging over the football club, those type of things. It's a big hoop to jump through and now that we've, you know, we have the confidence that we can do what we want to do and not worry about a big potential negative financial hole that we'd have to try to solve. There's obviously been concerns with fans groups about the future of the stadium and the ownership. Um, do you think this and what you said earlier today will help alleviate that a wee bit? I think there's a very small group of fans that have a concern. They've always had a concern. This, this group has a concern about us constantly. We've been here for 10 years. Um, we continue to invest in the football club. We continue to make things better for the football club, especially behind the scenes. Um, you know, I could get hit by a bus tomorrow, and they'd probably be happy with that, but I don't know what would happen with the football club at this point in time. So I hope so. I don't know that we can ever make everybody happy. Um, but I think that everybody has seen over our 10 years, although we're pretty boring people, we're always looking out for what the best interest of the football club. We're always doing things to for the football club and always investing in the football club. So... I, I don't know how to answer that, to be quite honest. <laughs> and then, best case scenario, what sort of time scale do you think you're, you're looking towards? Well, best case scenario, I would love to be, my consultants will hate this, but I would love for us to, I would actually love for us to actually have a concert or two in the stadium first to work out the kinks before the football fans come in. I wanted to have it oiled and ready to go so when the football fans are there, any mistakes that we're making, we've learned from and we've fixed. Um, and just having something new, just making sure we know how to utilize our tool. Uh, I think that that's a big deal. And so I would love for us to be kicking a ball no later than 2020, the summer of 2025. Now that's still a push, but that's where I would like us to be. Do you know who'd like to play the concert? I would love a I would love a a local Dundee band, a big local Dundee band, because that's the whole point of having the stadium is now having concerts that we can have twenty five thousand fans, so we have bigger acts that can actually come to Dundee. So, you know, who knows? <laughs> I'd name a few, but they'd probably be upset with me if I did that. So, but one of them does live in town that is really connected, and he's a big Dundee fan. So who knows? The, the decision to buy Dens Park, how, if at all, does that affect the security and sustain, the sustainability of Dundee Football Club for the future? Well, I think it's just, once again, it's another step. We are, I would say, as stable as the football club has ever been. Um, and But you guys, you guys, I've been here 10 years. My kids identify as, as Scottish. The... Um, we are dual citizens. We continue to invest in the football club. We are as stable as stable can be. I wasn't here for the things that happened previous. A lot of people have lived through that. It might be better to ask them how stable we are. Um, we feel that we're very stable. We get asked questions quite a bit about well, what happens if this happens. We don't think in those terms. We think in terms of this is the next step. Here's the next step. Here's what we're doing next. That's how we, we look at it. So um, from our point of view, we're, we're very stable and just continue to, to move on. 
I'm looking at that. What is the next step? Well, the next steps have been happening forever. I mean, the next steps with the stadium and those type of things have been happening for a long time. I think on the park, Tony and the group have put together a team. We, we did have a plan at the end of the year, last year, that we needed to revamp the team completely. So at the, be at the very end of the season, the beginning of this season, we had three players under contract, one of which had a broken leg. So it was a very busy summer, and we built a team that we, we think we can be proud of. But this is the first window, and I think Tony's going to need a couple of windows to actually build a, a team that he really, really wants. I mean, the team that we have now is very solid and, and are doing good things, but they're still really learning, you know, learning about each other, learning how to play with each other, learning to gel, um, because they're all new, I mean, for the most part. And I think that, I mean, we're very proud of what they have done because every week you can see an improvement. You can see, I mean, the football on Saturday, although it was a draw, it was good football. It was good to watch. If you were a neutral, you'd have thought that that was a good 0-0 zero, zero draw. Um, and, you know, everybody chipped in. Everybody did their part. And everybody, it was a very professional, you know, match that, that, they, uh, that they put on. And it was, it was entertaining. If Owen would just not hit that as cleanly as he did, we may have won. But it was, you know, it's... We're happy with where we're at, and we're happy moving forward. And sometimes we don't get it right on the park, and we make these mistakes, and we, we learn from these mistakes. But from behind the scenes, as you guys look around at what we're doing, you know, we're constantly moving forward. And, you know, as of about two minutes past five yesterday, when, when that deal went Two through, minutes before five. Two minutes before <laughs> five, sorry. Do you feel the club are now in, in a better position than they were previously? I think any time we add something like this, we're always in a better position. It's... Our vision is to have this beautiful jewel of a stadium, a perennial top six team, winning some silverware, these type of things, potentially getting to Europe. That's what we want. Every step that we take towards that is better for the football club.